People ask me all the time, what is the one thing we can do to ensure that food allergen desensitization goes smoothly? Well, unfortunately, it's not just one thing. It's a bunch of things. The most important thing we can do, in general, is to control any other inflammatory conditions that the patient might have. This includes eczema, environmental allergies, asthma, or even any allergic gastrointestinal inflammation. All of these conditions can contribute to fill up what I like to call your allergy bucket, or in this case, a mug. So think about it this way, right? You have this one mug or cup and it can only hold so much inflammation before it overflows, right? Before it throws its hands up in the air and says, I give up. So let's think of your capacity for inflammation as this cup or your allergy cup or bucket. In order to prevent a systemic reaction, we need to make sure that your level of inflammation stays under the overflow line at all times. But any allergic condition you have contributes to filling up this cup. So for example, if your environmental allergies are not very well controlled, well, now we're a little bit full. Say on top of that, you have active eczema, a little bit fuller still. Then if you have asthma or some allergic gastrointestinal inflammation, we're already up here. But now, if I wanna start a course of food allergen desensitization therapy and put your food allergen into your body, we're gonna raise it up a little bit more. Now, on a daily basis when you're feeling well, you may be able to coast by with your cup almost completely full. But say you get sick, you get a bad cold, or you get the flu. Well, now this bucket's gonna overflow, right? And you might experience an anaphylactic reaction. And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid in the first place. So it's to the patient's benefit to really reduce the levels of inflammation in this bucket as much as we can from the outset so that you have a whole lot of wiggle room to introduce the food allergen and increase it over time and then also have a little bit of space to play with just in case you get sick. So how do we go about reducing all these levels of baseline allergic inflammation? Well, it's a kind of multifaceted strategy. We can use aggressive skincare for eczema, for asthma, inhaled anti-inflammatory medications and environmental control. And environmental control medications or even environmental or aeroallergen immunotherapy for control of allergic rhinitis. Now, we don't have to use all of these strategies at once but it's important to have them all at our disposal so we can quickly punch another hole in that bucket if we need to.